Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer from St Matthew and St Luke's Darlington. Natural uh, light, the dullness of a blinded sight, anoint and cheer our soiled face with the abundance of thy grace. Keep far our foes, give peace at home, where thou art guide, no ill can come. Show us the Father and the Son, in thee and with thee ever one, that through the ages all alone. This shall be our endless song. Praise to thy eternal merit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, the God of our ancestors, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed is your holy and glorious name, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed are you in your holy and glorious temple, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed are you enthroned on the cherubim, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed are you in the heights of heaven, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Our psalm tonight is part of Psalm 104. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is a sea spread far and wide, and there move creatures beyond number, both great and small. There go the ships, and there is that leviathan, which you have made to play in the deep. All of these look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good. When you hide your face, they are troubled. When you take away their breath, they die and return again to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live, Creator God. Send your Holy Spirit to renew this living world, that the whole creation, in its groaning and striving, may know your living purpose and come to reflect your glory. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading tonight is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. St Luke writes, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, 
Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does it mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, but it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this but what is spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Our second song this evening is from the Teze community, um, Vene Sancti Spiritus, Tu e Amores Ignum Echende. Come Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love. <coughs> Today is the day of Pentecost, when we celebrate the birth of the Church through the coming of the Holy Spirit. Our reading from Acts this evening is full of strange imagery, tongues of fire, the sound of wind filling the room, seemingly unnatural, seeming, seemingly supernatural abilities to speak languages, even prophesy. There is more going on here than can be adequately covered in one talk, so we might well come back to this passage in the coming weeks. So our story begins with the disciples together in one place. The Christian faith has always had a communal aspect to it. The idea of faith being a purely personal one is, I don't think, a healthy one. And it's certainly not the experience of the earliest Christians. We read in further on in Acts that the early church was constantly together praying and celebrating. We are dependent on each other for support and fellowship. Maintaining this communal way of life is difficult at the moment, but we are trying our best. I know that many of you are phoning one another to check in and maintain your friendships, and I would encourage others to do, try to do the same even if you only have a two-minute conversation or leave an answer for a message. Knowing that someone has thought of you and checked how you are can make all the difference to a person's day and their mental well-being. For many people, both here in the UK and around the world, this past week has been a week of communal anger. In the US, protesters have taken to the streets to protest at the killing of George Floyd whilst he was in police custody. Whilst black people, including journalists, are arrested for simply being in the area, President Trump, using phrases common amongst white supremacists, has threatened to call in the National Guard to bring order to the streets. This is after he ignored the neo-Nazis 
who took to the streets of Charlottesville in 2017 and went on to call them fine people. Here in the UK, after three months of lockdown, people have become angry that a government advisor seemed to feel that he was above the law and that he could ignore the rules that we were all supposedly living by. That anger increased when government ministers tied themselves in knots trying to defend him, seemingly unable to criticise someone who went for a 60 mile drive to test their eyesight. Condemnation has come from all sides of the political divide. Governments know that when both the Guardian and the Daily Mail condemn you for the same thing, you have done something seriously wrong. But our government blithely go on as if nothing had happened. We've all had to make sacrifices in the last 12 weeks. Loved ones have died alone or comforted by the glow of a tablet screen. People have been unable to attend family funerals. Our children have gone slowly stir-crazy as they have been unable to leave the house to see their friends or to go to school. Grandparents have been unable to visit or hold their newborn grandchild, their only contact a picture on Facebook which looks like a young Patrick Moore. Some haven't left their homes in months, becoming reliant on friends and previously unknown neighbours due to them being more at risk than others. As a nation we pride ourselves on our supposed sense of fair play, our courage in adversity and the blitz spirit, whatever that means, to see us through hard times. When someone seeks to bypass social norms in the belief that they somehow don't apply to them, or that they are immune from criticism, as a nation we can quickly change from a loud tut to the ire and indignation reserved for those who put the milk in first whilst making a cup of tea. The images that St Luke uses in Acts to describe the Holy Spirit are ones of anger, disruption and violence. In, ver <coughs> Excuse me. in verse 2 of the passage I read today, we read that there came from <coughs> a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Wind is a hugely disruptive force, which can leave a trail of devastation in its wake. When it's windy, watch children, and you will notice it affects their behaviour. They become restless and flighty. Teachers will tell you that instances of disruption and unruliness increase when the wind starts blowing. But we shouldn't always see disruption as a bad thing. The disruption of Covid is allowing us the space and the time to try what to us are new things, such as this. When we open doors to previously locked rooms, the wind can sweep through, bringing freshness and clearing out the stifling stuffiness. People are asking questions about how church will look six weeks, six months, a year from now. And these are questions that we cannot run away from. I was listening to a podcast this week which had an interview with the folk musician Eliza Carthy, in which she was talking about tradition. And she said that tradition is not preserving the past in aspic. Tradition is what brings people together in a shared past and points to the future. Traditions can be like a cosy woolly jumper on a cold winter's day, or on a day to day a nice cold ice cream or a nice cold um, beer. This, they hold us, they make us feel better. But if we don't allow tradition space to grow and develop, then they can become idols and hindrances. Some people 
will understandably want to pick off where we left off in March of all of the traditions and practices that feel warm and familiar to them. I can understand this position. People want to have something that connects them to a time before lockdown and isolation. But we need to ask the question, for whose benefit do we maintain traditions? Do our traditions nurture and sustain us? Or are they simply what we do because that's what all we've always done? Does the tradition serve us or do we serve the tradition? I can enjoy traditional forms of worship. The hymn we sung at the beginning, you can't get much more traditional than that. However, my personal opinion is that we must make the best of the opportunities we are being given. How do we keep our traditions whilst allowing the wind of the Holy Spirit to blow through them, bringing freshness and life to them? How do we clear and tend well-worn ground in order that new life can start to grow? The coming of the Holy Spirit wasn't a sign to the disciples to continue in their safe enclaves being an insular holy huddle. The Holy Spirit forced them out of that small room to every corner of the globe. The Holy Spirit turned previously scared individuals into people willing to stand up and be counted, who defied the political and religious authorities of their day. Wind and anger can be equally disruptive, equally driving, equally forceful. How we respond to the source of our motivations can be as important as the source itself. Great changes in society have come about due to people's anger at injustice. The civil rights movement did not come into being through passive agreement, but through righteous anger at injustice. The winds of change blew through the 1960s just as they blew through the room that those disciples, and it continues to blow. It continues to blow through and disrupt our lives. It kicks down the doors we hide behind because we want to feel safe. And so, I have a question. How will the Holy Spirit disrupt your life this week? And what will you do about it? Amen. So we come to our time of prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in faith. Loving God, we pray for faith communities throughout the world. For those who are holding those communities together. We give thanks for our communal life however we express it, wherever it takes place. We pray for those communities that are feeling isolated at the moment. We pray for our nation for all who are worried and concerned. We pray for those who fear for their jobs, for those who fear for their health and their well-being. We pray for all those who are angry this evening, that their anger may be turned to something productive. Come Holy Spirit, breathe your life in us. 
kindle your love within us. Bring your healing touch to those who are in need. We pray for all those who have asked for us to pray for them. In particular tonight we pray for Bill Moss, giving thanks that he has been able to return home. We pray for Christine, his wife, for Caroline and her children. We pray for all those who mourn. In particular, we pray for those who mourn the passing of Dave and Charlie. We pray for Jenny and her family as they mourn their passing. And finally, we pray for ourselves. We bring to God all the fears we have. All our anxieties. All that we are thankful for. Loving God, we thank you that you have heard our prayer. We place ourselves and the coming week into your hands. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And it looks as if my PowerPoint has crashed, so while I try and stop that out, uh, I will go through the notices. Um, we get it. Excellent. Quicker than I thought. So, as today is Pentecost Sunday, we are joining with churches from across the town. They ask that at five to seven we put a candle in our window take a picture and we post it on our social media um, with the hashtag pray for darlington um, if you live in other places then you can still pray for darlington um, but um, if you pray for york or annick or redcar or um, portugal or wherever wherever you live then it spreads that prayer throughout the world. Also at seven o'clock this evening um, on the One Voice Darlington Facebook page, there is a joint um, prayer service um, during which um, there will be a video of faith leaders um, saying the Lord's Prayer together. That's something that I and Lisa have been involved with. And there's also um, the Darlington Blessing, which is a massive undertaking 
thank you to Sid Andrews at Horton who put it together. Um, people who have come together to, to sing um, the, the song The Blessing, which we posted um, on Easter Sunday, I think it was. Um, but it's based on the blessing from the Book of Numbers, where the Lord bless you and keep you. Um, and so people from across the island have sent their videos in um, and it's been put together. Um, I've been involved with that a bit. I think other people from the, from the parish have been involved. And so I'm quite excited to see what they've made of that. Um, our new prayer booklet is available. Um, it has been mailed out to some people, it's been through people's doors and it will be available on our website from next week. Um, that's morning, evening and night prayer with all the readings and the collects for between June and August. <coughs> if you use our telephone service um, for morning or evening prayer, that is the service book that we will be using. And the number for our pre-recorded morning and evening prayer is 01325 527 Four four six, and we have morning prayer on Sundays at half past nine, and evening prayer on Wednesdays at half past seven. Um, this um, evening prayer will also be posted up to you YouTube this after, later on this evening. Uh, if you are on YouTube, um, please um, like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we are Saint Matthew and Saint Luke's Darlington. And we also have on our YouTube channel videos from our Facebook um, family services, which I do with my daughter on Saturdays at three o'clock. Our next prayer service will be on Tuesday at 10 o'clock when I think it's Lissa is leading morning prayer this week. So we're going to sing our final hymn. Uh, this is from the Iona community. Um, throughout the Bible, a lot of the um, words used for the Holy Spirit use feminine nouns and words. And so that's something that um, John Bell has picked up on here. She sits like a bird brooding on the waters, hovering on the chaos of the world's first day. She sighs and she sings, mother in creation, waiting to give birth to all the word will say. She wings over earth, resting where she wishes, Lighting close at hand or soaring through the skies. She nests in the womb, welcoming each wonder, nourishing potential hidden to our eyes. She dances in fire, startling her spectators, waking tongues of ecstasy where dumbness reigned. She wings and inspires all whose hearts are open, nor can she be captured, silenced, or restrained. For she is the Spirit, one with God in essence, gifted by the Saviour in eternal love. She is the key, opening the Scriptures, enemy of apathy and heavenly dove. So may Christ's holy, healing, and enabling spirit be with you and guide you on your way at every change and turn. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and with all those whom we love, this night and always. Amen. May the grace of the Holy Spirit enlighten our hearts and minds. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.